Yes, and if it hasn't, Pacquiao's going to have an easy fight. Nice loose combinations there from Udell Johnson that time around. As Santos still smiling, but Udell starts to get into a little rhythm here and lets his hands go. And again, you see the temperament of Johnson, not just his style, and you know, his physical assets with the long arms and the height, but his temperament. His temperament is to be careful, not take chances, to look for spots. And in his mind, I'm sure, to be as smart as possible. But he's not a guy, Johnson, who relishes the fight. You don't get that feeling. You just right. don't get yep. that feeling that he's the guy who relishes getting in there and getting into right. the moment. That's what we were just talking about, Pacquiao and Cotto. Why are they so wildly popular? I mean, they win, but they also love the combat. You can tell. Pacquiao especially. Pacquiao loves it more than I think anyone on the planet. That should be an interesting fight. Teddy and I will talk about the super fight coming up tomorrow night in Las Vegas. Floyd Mayweather returns to the ring after nearly two years off. Santos crossing his legs there awkwardly. But he will get through six rounds here against Udell Johnson. Again, we'll talk Mayweather Marquez after this bout. And then the main event, Guillermo Rigondeau. We return to Miami Beach. There are the eyes and the eyebrows of Miguel Cotto. You can see the scarring from several fights where he's been cut, most notably against Joshua Clotty in what was an outstanding fight for both fighters. I thought I scored that actually a draw. A lot of people thought Clotty won, but Cotto won. It was a tremendous fight, but he was cut badly. November 14th, he will take on number one pound for pound Manny Pacquiao. Coming up after this fight between Udell Johnson and Frankie Santos, Teddy and I, We'll talk about the man who still thinks he's number one pound for pound. I don't want to get under Floyd's skin if he's in the hotel in Las Vegas watching this fight. No, I don't, actually. They're telling me, yeah, you No, no, no. If Floyd is watching, we know you were. You Floyd was number one pound for pound. And we know that, uh, you know, a win over Juan Manuel Marquez will go a long way to making that argument that he still deserves to be there. We have seen more action and more sparks between you and Floyd than in some of the fights here tonight. <laughs> I look forward to going to Las Vegas tomorrow night. I will have Sports Center coverage and ESPN News coverage post-fight. People who are looking to find out about that fight and see what went on. I Teddy mean, and I will talk about the weigh-in. I, I have a question for you that you are ideally suited to answer, Teddy, about the weigh-in today. When uh, you were out for Mayweather and De La Hoya, you had prescient comments about the weight issues that day. And I'm sure you have something to say about what happened today in Las Vegas. Well, right now, what I have to say is, again, Johnson fighting in the geography that he wants to fight in on the outside with his long arms and his height. And Santos doing more to go rounds than he is to win rounds. Not being in a hurry to get inside and engage Johnson. You're the taller guy, you want to stay on the outside. You're the shorter guy like Santos. You have to make a better effort than he's making right here to get in. And, and again, you can see Johnson, what he's looking for, what he likes. Especially with the physical dimensions of the fighter in front of him. Ryan, he likes that left uppercut, Johnson. Because he can get good leverage on it. He can see Santos coming. Santos lean forward a little bit, he's shorter. And Johnson can get spots to pot shot with that left uppercut underneath. See, already, Teddy, I, I would love to see him. And while Frankie Santos is, is, is earning his money tonight, he's come in, he's been sturdy, he's done his job, and he's working hard against a world-class fighter. I, I wonder what would happen with Udell Johnson if he was pressed by an experienced, young, hungry guy. I wonder. Well, he what, might respond quite well. What would happen is you'd find out what's inside Mr. Johnson. And you'd find out whether or not he can fight in dimensions and quarters other than what he's being forced to fight or allowed to fight tonight. Tonight he's being allowed to fight in the quarters that he wants to. With the kind of opponent you're describing, he would be forced to fight in other dimensions. And I point out, oh, wobbled Santos there, but Santos still strong and standing again. And trading as the bell rings. Again, I mentioned you know, Johnson might respond quite well. We don't know. This is a good level of progression fight to borrow a Pat Riley, the Hall of Fame basketball coach phrase. Take a look at this big shot that Johnson landed. Udell Johnson, the Olympic silver medalist 2004. 
stepping in and catching Santos flush. Now that's a good example right there of the first punch, the right hook, which misses. It's a setup punch. See, a lot of people won't even think about that right hook. But watch the right hook. It sets up the left hand. What it does is it forces Santos to go back, and it positions Santos. It put him in position for the straight left hand that would land. You know, it's funny, Teddy. It's also that Santos, he said, what, boxing is the reflection of the soul? Well, Santos shows what he is. He's a cop, and he's only going to get pushed around so much, and he's going to stay on his feet. You know, he's, he got hurt. There's no question he got hurt. But as the bell rang, he was throwing punches. Final round here. Eight rounds scheduled. Udell Johnson, Frankie Santos. The main event still to come. And again, if you haven't seen him yet, he is worth your time. Guillermo Rigondeau, two-time world champion, two-time Olympic gold medalist. He's sensational, but he's very calm, very different. He's his own fighter, he's his own man. We'll have much more on him coming up, final round here. Look at Teddy's scorecard as Udell Johnson is comfortable up on top. Santos, I think, now smells the end, knowing I've got one round. I'm doing okay. A little more energy, a little more bounce. And, of course, the more Santos comes in, the more opportunities for Johnson, who has the advantage of being on the outside, being the longer man, has the advantage of catching Santos before Santos can catch him. Teddy, if you're in the corner with Johnson and you know this fight's won, everything's good, but what would you say to him going into the final round of work against a sturdy veteran guy like this? I would say, look, stay on the outside, stay in the dimensions you need to, be smart, be alert defensively, but continue punching. Mm -hmm. Your defense, part of your defense for you is your counter-punching ability. So don't just go into a prevent defense mm -hmm. where you allow the football team to go down the field. Right. In this case, you allow Santos to go down the field, you know, to come across that canvas and start to attack you freely. Still keep the good combination of offense and defense, that nice balance where to take you home. It's a good analogy. You've been working with the Cleveland Browns, haven't you? My man, Eric Mangini. <laughs> I think he's going to be one of the top coaches in the future, and I think he's going to wind up, with time, turning that Cleveland Brown franchise around back to the historic winners that they've been in the past. Final minute, final round. Udell Johnson, Frankie Santos. Good work here by both fighters. It, it wasn't uh, scintillating, but it was interesting. And Udell Johnson, 28 years old, I mentioned that the clock is ticking, so it, this is a nice little fight to step up with and be interesting to see how he handles world-class opposition at the professional level. He's already faced that for many years as an amateur. And again, you see now Santos just walking in more opportunities for Johnson. To counter, the opportunities are going to be with the uppercut, with the right hook. 20 seconds of opportunities again for Johnson to catch Santos walking in. Final seconds of round eight. Again, we'll talk Mayweather Marquez, and then you will see one of the greatest fighters in the world right now, not just amateur, professional, Guillermo Rigondeau, in our main event here on Friday Night Fights. So that's this fight. Udell Johnson should earn a convincing victory over Frankie Santos, but good rounds. We'll have the official decision live from Miami Beach here on Friday Night Fights after this. Brian Kenny, Teddy Atlas, we've just seen eight rounds with the Olympic silver medalist Udell Johnson taking on Frankie Santos, the 30-year-old police officer from Puerto Rico. Teddy, take us through it. Well, for the most part, I think the thing that you have to respect and you have to admire a little bit, even if you didn't think it was a scintillating fight and it wasn't, is Johnson keeps the fight where he needs to. On the outside, he scores all the clean punches. He doesn't waste much. He looks for spots. He uses his legs a little bit to keep Santos, who is flat-footed off balance. And he keeps that distance where it only served Johnson and not Santos. Take a look at Teddy's scorecard. Should be pretty obvious. Frankie Santos, kind of a plotter, but he's got a good chin. He's got a big, strong head. And even when it's shaken, he comes back throwing. Teddy didn't give him a round, though. Let's see what the judges have to say. Let's go to our ring announcer, Bob Alexander. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from the Fountain Blue Miami Beach, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Rocky Young scores about 77-74. Judges Bill Ray and Michael Pernick both scored about 79-73. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Yudel La Sorpresa Johnson. Well, my question, Teddy, was did he win a round? And the judges gave him a bunch of rounds. Frankie Santos. Well, two judges only gave him one round, but that one man did give him many more rounds than mm. I saw. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew he won a round or two or three? <laughs> you never know. Udell Johnson, though, with the victory, he's now 3-0.